Right, so this video here is on um, developing out mathematically a cone. So what I've got here, uh, made in timber, is a frustum of a, of a uh, right cone. So we have a diameter on the top, diameter on the bottom, has a vertical height on it. Uh, you're going to make it possibly out of stainless steel, aluminium, mild steel, galvanised copper, anything like that. It can be a reducing cone or it could be expanding from a smaller diameter to a larger diameter. And what you need to do is to determine where the apex is. So this, where it's projected to the top is the apex and we need the apex to actually develop out our pattern. Currently we don't have that. Here is the piece that goes on top of it and it projects up through the sides right to the apex and that's what we actually want to find so we can start to develop our pattern. So I'm going to put that aside. And this is video is going to take a wee bit longer because there's quite a bit to cover. But um, So this is the sizes that I'm going to work with. My top diameter across this point is 135 millimetres. My base diameter is 240 millimetres and it's 115 millimetres high. And I need to find the apex so that I can start to develop my pattern um, graphically. We would project up to there, up the sides with a roll, get our fixed point, we'd set our dividers and swing our arcs. And I'll put that in there in a minute. The way to do it is to work out the reduction from the 240 down to the 135. So I want to work out the difference. If I take my, uh, if I divide my 240 by 2, I get 120 in here. If I divide my uh, 135 by 2, I get 67.5 at this point. So what I'll do here, um, I'm recording. So 120 millimetres minus 67.5 equals. So this distance here is 52.5. So from that point, what I need to do... Uh, is divide the 120, divide that by 52.5. So on the calculator I'll do that, 120 divided by 52.5 equals, and I'm getting a figure there of 2.28571. Uh, I'm going to go to that many decimal places. What I then do is I times it by my height here of 115. And that's going to give me an answer. So I'm going to times that by 115. And I get a distance from the apex, if I project out the here from the base. I get a height here of 262.8571. And that's the accuracy that I'm actually going to do it to. So now we have a new cone or, or a triangle that we can now apply Pythagoras' theorem to. So I'm going to draw that triangle just on here. So my radius at this point is 120 millimetres. My vertical height from here to here is 262.8571. So what I want to do uh, to determine is this length along here, and that's actually over here going to become my large radius for developing out my pattern. So with Pythagoras' theorem, I'm not sure whether you remember that, but it's C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared, and A can be either the 262.8571, or it could be the 120, it doesn't matter which one you put it in, and B would simply be the opposite. So on the calculator, to determine the hypotenuse, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just push first the square root button. So there it is on the screen. I'm going to push 120 squared plus 262.8571 squared. Push the equal sign. And that gives me a length here of 288. Uh, 0.953. So that is going to be my large radius. So 288.953, and that's millimetres. So from that point there, what I want to do is to determine my small radius. 
And how we go about that is we minus the 115 millimetres off the 262.8571. So I'm going to now draw another triangle here. And this triangle at this point is going to be 67.5 millimetres. And it's going to be, what did I say, 262.8571. Minus 115 means that the vertical height on that is going to be 147.8571.8571. So now I can work out the uh, small radius, which is going to be this, this distance in here. So I'm going to go back to the calculator. I'm going to do it all on hand so you can see it. So I push the square root figure. It doesn't matter whether the 67.5 or the 147.8571 is the A or the B, they're, just, they're interchangeable, completely irrelevant. So I push my square root figure, I'm going to push 67.5 squared, time, uh, sorry, go back one, plus, what they say, 147.8571 squared, and push equals. And that's giving me a length here of 162.536. So that's that distance in here with the 282.953 from the apex right to the base at that point there. So my small radius at this point here equals 162.536. So what I need to do now, when I develop my pattern, uh, I'm going to draw a full circle and um, the pattern is actually going to take up a portion of that circle and it's an arc angle so it's an angle within the circle. We know that a circle has 360 degrees in it so it's going to be a portion of that 360 degrees and the way we determine that portion of that circle is we divide the small diameter of the actual base of the cone by the large radius over here of 282, sorry, 288.953. So it's going to be 120 millimetres, 120 divided by 288.953. So on the calculator, I've got, uh, what they say, 120 divided by 288.953 equals. Now it's giving me a number there. Where am I going to write that down? Down here, taken over the board. It is 0 0.41529. I'm going to go to five decimal places. Now that is a, a portion or a fraction of the 360 degree circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to times that figure by 360 and it tells me that the angle is 149.505 will go to, 505 degrees. So if I draw a full circle at 360 degrees and pick a start point, I want to go around, well you can imagine directly opposite that line, this is 180 degrees at this point, if this is zero, with 90 being up here. So 149 degrees is somewhere in this portion, sorry, somewhere in this portion in here. That's going to be roughly 149 degrees. So once we've got that, then we can start to use the chord length formula. Where am I going to put that on the board? Right up the top here. So a chord length, chord length, equals the diameter times sine A over 2. Well the diameter of the circle that we are going to draw is twice the large radius. So 288.953 times 2 equals, go back to my calculator, 288.953 times 2 equals uh, 577.906 millimetres, 906 millimetres. So into that equation, I'm going to bring it down into here, chord length, 
I'm just going to abbreviate that as CL equals diameter 577.906 times sine A over 2. Now the sine A uh, is actually, what we have to do to get the sine figure is we take our angle of 149.506 and divide it by 2 before we push the sine button. So at this point here we divide it by 2. So on the calculator I've got 149 point, what did I say, uh, 505 divided by 2 equals. So that's going to give me 74.7525 degrees. So in here, chord length equals the diameter, which is 577.906 times sine 74.7525. So on the calculator, if I push the sine figure for that number that was already on the screen, it gives me 0 0.96479, you can see that. And then if I times that by the diameter of 577.906, I get a chord length, so the chord length equals 557 millimetres. So my arc angle over here, right over here, is 149.505 degrees. My chord length is 557 uh, how many decimal places did it go to? Okay, so it went to uh, 0 0.56. We'll just go to 0 0.56. It's got many um, numbers after it, as you can see on the calculator, but we'll ignore those. We don't need to be... I mean, even when you're developing it on a sheet of metal, you're only, actually only going to round it up to five, five, uh, 558 millimetres, and that will be more than accurate for anyone that's developing a cone like that. So... I've worked out all the information I need. What I need to develop this cone is in this window here. That was what I had to determine from this particular drawing here to do my development. So what I'm going to do, if I can fit it on the board, because I've sort of taken over the place as you can see, I'm going to put a dimple on the board and I'm going to set my dividers up. So my large radius is 288 millimetres, 288 millimetres, setting my compass at that. Now I will draw the full circle. There's my circle. I want my small radius here of 162.5, 162.5. Draw the full circle again. Full circle being, what did I say? Obviously 360 degrees. So the diameter of this circle here was 577 millimetres. 577.906 to be really accurate. If I take a start point, I'm just going to put a line on here. I'm not going to worry about where I actually, you know, what particular angle that line is try and draw it straight. So there's a start line and we need to put in a chord length, this being a, a start point, a chord length is a straight line across a circle if you remember that. So I'm just going to measure it because of my compass doesn't go out, uh, my compass slash dividers don't go out to that length. So from here I'm going to measure from this point 557 millimetres and I need to take it right to the very end of the roll. So it's that point there. So from that point on the circle, I'm going to run back to this point here, to the centre of the circle. There we go. And if you can imagine if I took this line from one side, with my start line through the centre, to the outside of the circle over here, this is 180 degrees, even though it's slightly rotated around. A straight line across the a circle through the centre gives 180 degrees. We'll draw it on the other side. This here is 180. 
so was short of the 180, it had to be 149. So this portion around here is 149 point, really accurate, 505 degrees. So our, our pattern development, lost the end of my pen, doesn't matter. Here's our cone sitting in here, the development of this piece. So this shaded in zone is actually the pattern that we've been trying to calculate out. So that's how you do the calculations. I know it looks a bit overwhelming, just stop the camera. Um, but it's not too bad, you know. Basically you're using the chord length formula you're using Pythagoras' theorem, and from there it's simply calculations using addition, subtraction, wee bit of division. Takes some practice to get used to it, but um, you can actually calculate it out. So I've done some videos on how to graphically draw something out. Some people struggle with the maths. You can learn to develop any of these patterns graphically, and then you can do them mathematically. Now a lot of people shy away from the maths, may have struggled at school, may not have had very good experiences with maths, but um, if you can come back to learning the maths, you need to watch the video multiple times. Don't think you're going to pick it up the first time. There's no way anyone would pick that, all that information up the first time. You need to try it multiple times to get used to it, get some confidence. And the reason I want you to learn it is because it's going to put more money in your pocket. A, a company or an employer wants people that can do this very quickly. Small items like this can be drawn out on a bench very quickly, but very large cones that um, take up a lot of floor space, you're not going to be able to draw it out on the floor with a bit of chalk or a string line or something like that. You want to calculate it and then lay it onto a sheet if you can. It's going to save you much, much time, and that's what an employer wants. An employer wants you to save him time and money. So we can, we can graphically draw it out, we can mathematically develop it, um, now some of you are working in companies where you're getting um, the pieces already cut for you. You know, someone's bringing in a sheet that's been cut out at uh, a laser cutting firm and you're getting these patterns and you're just rolling them up because you're assuming they're right and they may not be. And what your job is to determine whether the pattern is right, you can work it out on the paper very, very quickly. You know, this takes only two or three minutes to work out. It's taken me longer simply because I need to explain it. But you can do this very, very quickly, and when a pattern comes in that's already been cut out on a laser, turret punch, anything like that, plasma cutter, you could run a tape over it and determine whether it's accurate or not before you start forming it up. Once again, it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of money. This portion right around the outside edge here is the equivalent of the diameter, 240 times pi. So let's do that there, 240 times pi. Turn my camera back on. So, two, uh, sorry, 240 times uh, shift pi equals. This distance from the start point here to the finish point is 753 millimetres. Uh, 753.98 millimetres to be really accurate. So that's how it would actually lay out. Yeah, I'm going to leave that. I was going to talk about something else, but I'll, I'll leave it up there. So there's quite a bit of information there, but uh, practice it. You know, it takes practice. As I said, you're not going to pick it up the first time. You need to do it multiple times to get used to it. Pause the video. Watch what I've done, uh, go over it numerous times, and um, if you can sort of watch it every so often, it will start to sink in. I will leave it there, thank you.